Well, good morning. Here in Missouri, it's a cold and blustery day. I'm in the house taking it easy. Got my chores all done earlier and the ducks and the dogs are happy. I'm here, duckies. Do you want out, duckies? And we watched Wrangler Star with his story concerning his grandfather or great grandfather and the skunk catching. And it reminded me of a story that my dad did when I was a very small child in the probably early 30s, mid 30s, possibly. And Times were very hard then. In fact, the uh, kind of average income of the farmers around was around $300 a year. It was almost desperate to make a living for your family or make food for them. You didn't make a very good living, but just to feed them. But one thing my father did to help in the wintertime because for several years in the summertime, we, this section of the country was in a severe drought. So you couldn't raise any crops. It just wouldn't grow. And so my father did hunting and self uh, pelt in the wintertime. And so one year he, out of season, hunted skunks and other animals for their pelts, but he hunted skunks particularly and out of season and he placed them in our loft, our hay loft in a barn where we lived. And of course he hunted before season started. And he got up to around 200 live skunks in the barn, oh, barn loft, and he was going to leave them there till season came in and then skin them and sell the pelts. Well, someone tipped him off that the uh, game warden had got word that he had those skunks in the barn loft and was going to be visiting real soon. So my father went out and turned all those skunks loose and chased them out of the barn and had an empty barn when he came around. And shortly after the game warden left in a few days, he started trying to round his skunks up again. And he would take out, take the dog out because the skunks were hungry too, because there just wasn't much to eat. And he would take his dog out and the skunk, or the dog would start chasing the skunk and dad would carry a gunny sack and while that dog was chasing the skunk he'd run by and grab it by the tail and lift it up. If you hold them up by the tail they won't spray. So he'd drop them in that sack and he got his skunks pretty well all caught back up and put back in the barn loft. And they were a very valuable product for him to have. They didn't bring much, two or three dollars a piece, but you know, a hundred of them was equal to a year's pay, or whatever you call it, pay is on your own. Well, after my dad put all those skunks in the uh, bar loft, he had to scrounge up something to, uh, to feed them and to water them. Of course, we had some water in a well. So he could water them, but he had to scrounge around and just find anything at all as grain or rats or mice or whatever they eat about anything and to feed them. But once he got them up to the game season, he went out and skinned them all and sold them. And 
so he had a lot of fun, although it probably wasn't fun to him at the time. It was a serious crop. Learning that he could follow the dogs and pick and just right ahead when the dog get to him, he'd grab him by the tail and yank him up. And the skunk was running and they don't spray while they're running, they have to stop. He bagged those things up and bring them back home again. For many years, after those early 30s when things were so desperate, Dad still made a lot of our our food money in the wintertime by catching and skinning possums, skunks, coons. We had some mink around and he caught quite a lot of those and it helped considerably to have that income in the wintertime because it was slow going trying to get in a position financially to own any animals other than the ones that you could eat. And so pelts were a good source of income. I guess that's about the end of that spoke story.